Good afternoon. Just checking something here. Let me see. Oh, no, that's different. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, share. There we go. Okay. Hi, welcome to the broadcast. Didn't mean to go weird at the beginning of that one, um, but I wanted to do something special, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, hi, this is episode number 884. And the topic today is actually going to be an interesting one. It's a, it's a slight pivot, but it's also informational. And basically, I'm going to tell you a story from my own life about what really drives me to do this work and why I've done over 880, 880 broadcasts. And, um, and also, what's next? So I make a lot of sense about that. Once I get to that point, let me choose myself first, and then we'll jump right in. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Ta-da, welcome. <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert. Also the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book that I recommend highly because I wrote it about love and relationships. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance in love, life and business because of that. And I also started these talks because of that as well. And I'll explain more about what that means in a moment. Um, so almost three years ago now, I started these talks called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring and Feminine Heart. Because I've been on a mission, basically, and I've been really passionate about sharing and inspiring and waking people up. So I want to tell you a little story, really a pivot in my life, which happened back in 2007. I've shared bits about it, but I want to speak about it more bluntly because it informs what I'm doing, not next, but expanding into. So stay tuned for that. This is 2007, after I had been through some interesting relationships, which is what informs my work, <laughs> just to be transparent, but also what had really... Um, up to that point, been somewhat dysfunctional. Now, a lot of people go through relationships without any sense of what dysfunction is. So I'm just speaking from my own experience, having done quite a bit of work since the mid 80s. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing this for a while now. I still couldn't get it right, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I've been on this seminar path since the mid 80s. I've got a master's degree in spiritual psychology. I've, you know, I've, done, I've been a spiritual counselor at my spiritual center since 2000. But in 2006, I still didn't have a clue in one area of relationships. So yeah, I was dating and having relationships, but three times in a row, I kept making the same mistake. And it was the third time where it kind of got smacked over the head and I went, oh, something's off. To, sp to skip past some of the, the details, because that's past not so critical in this moment, um, I found myself in a, a retreat, a three-day retreat, which delved into, to expand it into, and started talking about not so much, not just the masculine and feminine polarity of relationships, but also the masks and the shells that we wear individually to flip the script, so to speak, to actually alternate from what our true calling is to put on a certain persona to fit into the world. If you see my broadcasts recently, especially for the last several months, I've talked a lot about how the business world was created by men for men and women have been trying to fit in ever since. As part of what women have done is put on this shell, this mask of being like men, not physically necessarily, but energetically, to better succeed in the business world. So in this retreat, it was a pivot point on so many levels for me. One of those things was to understand exactly how out of line I was, because I was not aligned, to be honest. Um, I didn't even understand that masculine and macho were two different things. I thought that being like a real man was to be a bully or a bossy or pushy or ego-driven. I had no idea that a masculine man, which is what I would now call a real man, or that's a really weird term, is a man that really owns his heart more than anything else. And... I've been owning my heart, so to speak, but I was doing it from a very feminine place. I didn't know at the time I was doing that, but I was so out of, so out of alignment that I didn't really understand what, I didn't have a clue basically what the right way was. So anyway, so I'm in this retreat and I'll give you the detail, I'll tell you what it, yeah, I'll just tell you, I was like, save it to the end, like, don't want to save it to the end. So I was at a retreat, hi Nancy, nice to see you, thanks for being at my broadcast. I did a retreat um, with this company, this training called Warrior Sage out of Vancouver. Um, Satyana and Suzanne Raja, husband and wife, taught it. So many epiphanies, so many understandings, it was an incredible training. But what I was aware of through that weekend event, and it was, I did the weekend four or five times and staffed it a bunch of times, then went into the deeper work that their, one of their teachers taught, which is David Data. But in the, in the experience of the weekend, the men and women would sit on sub, separate sides of the room, which reminded my Jewish upbringing, to be honest. <laughs> Whole different vibe, though. So, yes, even though the men and women sat separately, it wasn't a religious experience, although it was kind of an epiphany. Didn't think of that before, yeah. Okay, men and women sitting separately in the room and we do sharing and dialogue and practices and processes and then every we do breakouts every session where the men go to one room, women go to the other room. 
And over the weekend, we do practices that would deepen the men in the masculine, the women in the feminine. And there were a couple of people who were in the other rooms, meaning there were some men who were getting more feminine because that was a natural calling. This is true, this happens, and it's part of the population. And also women who want to be more masculine. Now, in these cases, the people who switched rooms were actually gay, but that's not necessarily a requirement. There are actually straight feminine men and straight masculine women. That's actually natural for some. But the majority of us, men, masculine, women, feminine, that's just the way it works out. So anyway, so we, we come back from the, break, the breakout sessions every session and or after, after every break or every time. And it was like we were deepening because we were being separated and put together, de- separated, put together, et cetera, et cetera, for the weekend. On the last session on Sunday afternoon, when we came back together for the last time, they had us stand basically, if I remember correctly, standing separate from men and women. Hi, Sandy. Nice to see you broadcast. Um, self-confidence, self-confidence that is easy and humble is always the most attractive in either sex, I feel. You know what? I think I agree with you. Yeah, there's something about self-confidence that is so um, attractive because it is authentic when it is humble and easy. So, yeah, I like what you said. I like that. Thank you for that, Sandy. I appreciate that. So, um, <laughs> you're saying hi to each other. By the way, this is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering if you're watching it somewhere else. I do post these in other places. Um, so men and women come together at the end of the day on the last day, on the Sunday. That's Hawaii? Well, that's high. I'm not sure what you're saying there. Okay. So anyway, men and women stand separate, separate sides of the room facing each other. It's the end of the, end of the weekend. We've been together since Friday afternoon. And I was absolutely... <laughs> I love the emojis. Thank you. I'm watching from my side amongst the men, the row of women in front of me. And it was like a switch had been flipped inside of me. Yes, indeed, Hawaiian, yes. <laughs> um, sorry, I was wanting to comment in case you're not seeing those. For the first time in my life, I witnessed, experienced, took into my heart, and was in worship of the Divine Feminine. Simple as that. I was watching this room of women, and it wasn't any one woman, it was the whole group of women. It was the energy that all of them put it, presented that was incredible feminine depth. Now, I, I may have experienced it once or twice. Um, you're not seeing other comments? I don't know why. There's, I'm, seeing you, I'm seeing you, Nancy, and Sandy interacting, or at least I'm seeing both your comments. That's the only comments I'm seeing, just in case you're wondering. So, let me... <laughs> that's anywhere wherever you are. <laughs> I'm not sure why you're doing that. You should be seeing both. Again, okay, let me do a sidebar for a second. Facebook is always a beta test. Just be aware of that. It's never, never production, so just be aware of Facebook's always tweaking, changing going wrong. I've already reported some bugs to them about Facebook Live. We'll see if they respond. So standing across from the women, I'm going to stay true to my story. I witnessed this feminine energy like I'd never experienced before. And internally, I don't think I did it physically, looking back to 2007, but I was feeling like I fell to my knees in worship. I really was in awe, in respect and humility for the feminine energy that I never witnessed that way before. I've known women over the years, many, many years, but I had never spent any time in that around arena of women in their feminine. I've been around lots of women before, but let's be honest about this. Both as men haven't owned their masculine, a lot of women haven't owned their feminine, just to be clear, and not offending anybody, at least not intending to, but there's a difference. So at the end of the weekend, I was in absolute awe. I, we, had, we had a practice we did with a, um, I'm not going to go details because it's confidential, but we did a practice that really bonded with that energy. And I was so committed from that point forward that it changed my life. And so I basically haven't dated since then. Yes, I've been single since 2007 um, because one of the lessons I learned and some of you say, how can you be a relationship coach if you've been single for 12 years? Because what I got clear about is my work is in teaching this. And actually more than that, it's been helping women own their feminine through my own background teachings for the last 30 years. But also I became clear that as a masculine man, which I own, honor, and appreciate myself and do my best to live every moment, my work is to serve the planet. My work is to serve the feminine to actually help women own their feminine gifts their feminine magnificence and to live in healthy relationships that's been my work for the last 12 years oh okay now see didn't know you've been almost as long as i have <laughs> we could compare notes on some level maybe not not that well, yeah okay so what's been coming up though and oh i'll speak to something else so these facebook lives i remember there's three things i want to talk about so my story what inspired this in the first place so again three years ago almost actually next month will be three years I started doing Facebook Lives, and it started, if you know, three years ago, December 2016, was a month after the election. Yes, that was a pivot point for me. I'd been given guidance by one of my mentors and coaches 
that he, he suggested that I want to step into some new message. So the numbskulls dusted in between. <laughs> you may have had more, more of a bumpy road than I did <laughs> in those years. <laughs> we will talk with Nancy at some point. I love this. Um, and, I, and stay tuned because I'm going to mention about the group I just started about two hours ago that you want to check out. Um, and that's, one, that's the third piece I'll talk about in a moment. So second piece. After the election in 2016, it became clear, became clear that just talking about relationships wasn't enough and not coaching about that. And my mentor had been nudging me saying, it's time to step up and speak. But he said, don't do this like pre-recorded videos or as a podcast or something like that. Do it live and raw and real using Facebook Live. That's what started this whole thing for me back in 2016. I didn't have anything organized. I wasn't planning this. So basically it was probably, no, actually it may have been November even. I remember I was, I was, the weather was warm so I was riding my bike down by the beach, but I would stop every, like every week, two weeks and do a Facebook Live from wherever I was. So, so the first few Facebook Lives looked pretty raw and real. I've got, I've got to find, I'll find the links I'll put them below because it was looking back and going, come a long way in three years. So I would basically speak about what I felt was where women weren't hearing this. Now I was in a mindset where somehow women had been denied permission because of the election, which wasn't true, but I felt a lot of women were shutting down energetically because of what happened in 2016 in November. So I was speaking up and saying, like, it's time to, to, to remember your truth. It's, it wants to give permission. I was saying, I called it permission granted, which was a mistake because I realized people thought I was giving them permission. It's like, no, give yourself permission was kind of my MO. That was my intention. Anyway, that started these talks 2016, December. So I've been going now for three years almost. 884 broadcasts. Um, I don't have an end in sight. This has continued going on because I feel like this is part of my work. Because as I said, I've not dated since 2007 because... I was clear that my work it wanted to be, you want to shut down your Facebook page after that. I, I imagine you've been getting a lot of attention, yes. That's one of the challenges of being this, in this work, Nancy, for ladies especially, is that especially when you're an attractive woman, you will draw to it um, a lot of challenge, but also you're, gonna ch you're also gonna get a lot of attention you don't want. That's one thing. Oh, you're talking about politics too. <laughs> I saw something else in there, so. So, three years been doing the Facebook Lives. I don't know where it's going yet, but something just started because thanks to a conversation with a friend of mine today, Katie, giving you a shout out. I'll post you on I'll remind, I didn't tag you yet. I'll tag you afterwards, um, which inspired what I started today. So today I launched, yes, politics after the election was incredible. Yes, it's been definitely a lot of negativity and losing a lot of friends over the last three years, unfortunately. So yeah, I understand how you feel with that. Um, so getting back to my point, I want to make to finish this off. <laughs> I'm actually doing a broadcast here and in my new group that I just launched, which is called The Dance of Polarity. So what I just started today is a group called The Dance of Polarity. In fact, you go to facebook.com forward slash dance of polarity, or one word, you can join the group. Um, it just started today, so it's, there's like two people in it. It's gonna become a place where I'm gonna share a lot more content, a lot of, ti a lot of time to, you're trying to throw me off. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, but I haven't done this enough times now. <laughs> You have inspired me so many times, Nancy, so I'm just gonna say thank you for that. Even try to throw me off because you keep reminding me to stay true to myself. So I appreciate you doing that. That's what I love about you, because you do that for yourself. So my group I just launched is called Dan The Dance of Polarity. It's actually, I actually grabbed the title Dance of Polarity as the name of the group in Facebook. So you can go to facebook.com slash dance of polarity or groups. That's no, facebook.com slash groups slash dance of polarity. The link, will be, the link will be in the comments. You can join it and, find, and get, check out more information. I'm gonna post a lot more stuff there. I'm probably gonna do less on my personal page because, I, or I may do it both places, I'm not sure yet which. But I'm going to step up and speak up more there and it's gonna be a closed group, meaning it's public, but I make it, I'm gonna see how I can make the post private because I wanna make sure we keep it confidential. But I also wanna teach more direct stuff there, more than I've been doing on my personal page because I wanna make it real and real, raw and alive there. So I'm inviting you to join my personal, page, my personal group, personal group, my public group um, where we can talk and we can have conversations. I'll be offering some free stuff there. I may even offer some paid stuff there just to be transparent. But I want to start a conversation outside of my personal page where we can have a dialogue because I've had some interesting posts recently from the friends of mine that one of my friends posted a thing about submission and masculine and feminine stuff that was amazing. She said 475 comments so far. This woman is on fire. She writes incredible stuff. She's a dear friend of mine. And I'm realizing that on my personal page isn't so visible. If I put it into the group, there's a place where we can all discuss and converse and see each other's posts. So the group's alive, it's ready, you can join it now, um, and we can start talking. There's a point to this I wanna make that's gonna summarize this, I can feel it coming in. 
Well, I already know I'm going to number going to one thousand, as in number of one thousand broadcasts. Because why not? It's like that's the one. Oh, that's a sidebar, by the way. Masculine men need goals. <laughs> that's a sidebar. Of someone saying here, ladies, if you're seeing men in relationship, if you've got men in your life, brothers, partners, whatever it is, make sure they know what they're up to, what they're focusing on, the next step, whatever that next step is. If it's just a three three minute thing or a three mile thing. Keep them focused because that helps them stay in their masculine. It's one of my messages too. So this is where I'm going toward for a thousand. So I started the new group because I want to create a new space and have some results for people in that group. So in summary, now you know why I do what I do. Now you know why I keep doing it and you know where I'm going. How's that working for you? <laughs> so if you do want some help, I'll put some links in the comments as always. Um, my book I already mentioned, I'll put a link to the group so you can join it. And also I'll put a link to have a chat with me if you want to get some more help. Um, this is going to shift a little bit because my work's going to be speaking to women and to men is my intention whilst well, the direction I'm being pushed in nudged and cajoled into and this will help you I hope so I hope this made some sense to you um, I'm heading out shortly so I did the broadcast early today because I'm going to go out to a I'm going to a game night with some game game night with some friends just didn't come out right there so I want to make sure I get my broadcast done earlier than usual so normally it's 5pm pacific time by the way if you haven't seen my broadcast before I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day on my personal page, unless a change of plans happens, which is why it's 4 p.m. today. Um, if you haven't seen me before, you can join me live every day on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. You can also join me in the group, which I'll put the link in below, which is the Dance of Polarity, so you can watch it there, because I'm going to put them in there as well. Um, you can also watch them on my business page, which is barryselby.org. You can find the replays and the archives there, although Facebook doesn't keep them all there. So you can like my page and check them out there. Alternatively, you can catch all of my replays, because I do keep them collectively in one place, on my YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel and you can watch all the replays there. Yeah, I'll send you the link. If you haven't already found it, then I'll send you the link. Um, already got a couple of our mutual friends in there, um, one of which inspired me to do it. So um, that's, oh yes, on the YouTube channel, Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. You can watch them all there and check them all out. My talks are there to help you, to inspire you, to, to help you move forward. The links that I add at the back end are for you to check out more detail what I'm offering, to get some things I present, and also to get some help. Because these talks are meant to inspire, but if they provoke things where you're going, oh, I need some help with that, don't sit on that. Reach out for support. Links will be in the comments. Replays will be showing up shortly. And with that, I thank you for watching. Join my group. Let's have some fun. With that, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, well, 5 p.m. tomorrow, same time as normal, not today, and same channel, and I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.